In class, we passed white light through a prism, and we saw that it got bent twice as it went through the prism, first as it entered the prism, then as it left the prism. The component colors on the right-hand side you see here then make up white light. And once again, the reason that the violet bends more than the red is because light behaves as a wave, where violet has a higher frequency and red has a lower frequency. Since light behaves as a wave, we get to revisit all the stuff we learned about waves. Let's go back to our favorite lab of the year, the Pendulum Lab. Pause the video so you can review these two slides discussing waves. In order to make a wave equation, we're going to have to turn these concepts into symbols. So we'll use F for frequency and lambda for wavelength. Lambda looks like an upside down Y. Frequency is really cycles per unit time. And we measure in units called Hertz. This is abbreviated HZ. Using frequency and wavelength, we can now describe wave speed. Here comes our equation. So this question is referring to a standing wave that's created in water. For these kinds of questions, it's important that we record what they want us to find and record what they've given us. So they want us to find frequency, wavelength, and speed. Reading the question carefully, it actually tells us how often the wave moves up and down. It's three times each second. The description also tells us the wavelength. So in this problem, all we need to calculate is the speed. And our equation for speed, once again, is velocity, or V, equals frequency times lambda. So our equation is solving for velocity. We just need now to plug in some numbers. So we have 3 hertz for the frequency and 2 meters for lambda, or the wavelength. 3 times 2, carry the 1 minus it, that's 6. 6 hertz meter. Whoa, 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 what's a hertz meter? I thought we were looking for something like meters per second. To understand this, we've got to do your favorite thing. So we have 6 hertz meters. Now a hertz, once again, is nothing more than cycles per second. And this meter represents meters per cycle. Hopefully you now see what's going to happen. The cycles cancel out and we're left with meters per second. Remember to always box your final answer. Once again, we want to record what they're asking for. So they want us to find frequency, speed, and wavelength. This time, they've given us the speed that sound travels in the air, 340 meters per second. But what is this reference to A note all about? All the music people in class will understand and know that a string, when it vibrates, vibrates at a certain frequency. Every note has a specific frequency. So as it turns out, the A note has a frequency of 440 hertz. So that string moves back and forth 440 times each second. Yeah, I know this is a guitar, not a violin. Deal with it. So now we need to calculate for wavelength. We can use our wave equation to do this. So our wave equation is solving right now for velocity. We want to make sure it solves for wavelength first. To do this, we're going to show you a simple method called diagonal slide. So we can imagine our equation as being over 1. If I want to isolate lambda on one side of the equal sign, I've got to get rid of frequency. To get rid of it, I've got to move it across the equal sign. 
If I move something across the equal sign, I must move it diagonally, hence the term diagonal slide. So now I have lambda equals velocity over frequency. It works out mathematically, trust me. If I want to isolate frequency, I've got to get rid of lambda. So once again, I move it diagonally, the diagonal slide. It's pretty simple now, but keep this idea in mind. We have a lot more variables to work with. So we solve our equation for lambda and we get velocity over frequency. Let's plug the values in. So we calculate 0.773 meters per second per hertz. But let's not forget our sig figs. We have two sig figs in 340 and two sig figs in 440, so our final answer can only have two significant figures. That puts us at 0.77. But what is a meters per second per hertz? You guessed it. Let's do some dimensional analysis. So we have meters per second per hertz. But remember, a hertz is really cycles per second. We're dividing fractions here. So we know the rule. Whenever we divide fractions, we must multiply by the inverse. So we end up with meters per second times seconds over cycles. We end up with meters per cycle, but since we're dealing with waves, we just can write meters. In this problem, they're asking us to calculate the frequency of red light. To calculate frequency, we're probably going to need to know the velocity and the wavelength. They give us the velocity as 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. They don't give us the specific wavelength for red light, but they do give us a range for all of visible light. Remember, visible light is represented by Roy G. Boog. So red is at one end of the spectrum and violet is at the other end. We know red is the longest wavelength, so it must be the 0.70 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. So now we can use our wave equation once again, solving for frequency, and we end up with velocity over lambda equaling frequency. Crunching numbers, we should end up with the following answer. I'll let you figure out how meters per second per meter can be turned into a hertz.